everyone, this is Rachel from Sunbear Glass Craft, and this week I wanted to build on my first soldering video and now cover how to add those little finishing touches, specifically how to bead your edges as well as how to attach your jump rings. I didn't have enough time in my first video to cover this topic, but I felt like it would be a good little standalone video since they're kind of related. I've added timestamps even though this video is a little bit shorter just to help you find things more easily. For my sun catchers that have a basic shape such as a circle, square, triangle, and so on, I'll use lead came around the edges. For my pieces that have irregular shapes, such as my honeycombs and monstera leaves, I will bead the edges, meaning I apply a dollop of solder to the edges to give them a more rounded look, plus give the piece a little bit more structure. To bead the edge, you want to make sure you're holding the piece as upright and level as possible. This will be slightly more difficult for rounded edges, but for straight edges, it's a piece of cake. When beading the edges, you want your iron to be a lower temperature than for the rest of the soldering, as high temperatures can cause the foil to lift and detach. I tend to bead my edges with my iron at 410, although I used to bead at 360. It's hard to describe how much solder I use when grabbing some when I bead the edges, but I suggest starting with a smaller amount and building it up gradually until you recognize how much solder you'll need. For small edges like on my honeycombs, I tend to take a bead that's about 1-2 to two millimeters long. If you use too much, you could risk the solder falling off the edge, which isn't very fun to fix. In this video, you'll also see me applying the solder to the edge and then waiting. I'm simply waiting for the solder to cool and set before moving it so that the edge stays nice and smooth. Whenever I'm done beading the edges, I like to make sure to check for pockets where the corners meet. All I do to fix this is take a tiny piece of solder and melt it in, letting it sit for a moment so it evenly melts into the clean line I already created. Sometimes the solder can be difficult, in which case I'll just fix the whole line and go all the way to where the corners meet, as you see here. Now let's talk about jump ring placement and attachment. As a general rule of thumb, you should try and attach the jump rings directly to a solder line, which will give it the most stability. The only time I'll attach my jump rings to an outer edge is when the piece is extremely light, like my honeycombs, and there are a few things that I do to increase the strength of the edge the jump ring is attached to. Whenever I'm soldering the jump ring to the edge, I really like to build up the solder as much as possible, then I'll go back to the edge and thicken and smooth out the solder that's on the edge it's attached to. For smaller pieces that use smaller jump rings, I like to open the jump rings up to make them kind of look like a horseshoe. This allows me to solder one side and then the other, which will, down the road, help prevent them from flipping down once we're fixing the edges. Once I have my rings opened up and I'm ready to solder, I'll apply flux to the ring as well as to the surface I will be soldering it to. I use my grosing pliers to hold the ring in place, and then I'll take my solder and solder one side of the ring and then the other, and then I'll build up the solder in between them, that way it isn't obvious that there's a gap where I opened the jump ring up. At the end, you should have a nice smooth bead covering your jump ring, like you see here. For all large pieces that I don't use lead came for, I will attach the jump ring directly to the solder line and usually it'll have a little tail sticking off from the ring, which makes sure it does not go anywhere. If my jump rings have these little tails, I like to solder them in before soldering the back of the piece. If it's just a normal ring, I'll wait until the back is completely soldered, apply flux where I want the ring to go, and melt it into place. Honestly, each piece that I make has different ways that I solder in the rings. Sometimes they'll have a tail, sometimes they won't, sometimes the rings are bigger, smaller, and it all just kind of takes practice to figure out what you're going to need to do for each individual project. On a final note, since I get this question all the time, the main size of copper wire that I use is 16 gauge, and I actually recently purchased 20 gauge that I use to now make my jump rings for my smaller pieces, such as my honeycombs. 
I unfortunately do not know the brand of copper wire that this is. I purchased this directly from my stained glass store that I go to locally and it the sticker on the front is just that's all it says uh, that it's a four ounce roll of 16 gauge copper wire pretend. I like to make all of my own jump rings and as you can see I use this Bic pin for the sizing for my honeybees. I have different pins that I like and I know the width of that work well for me with the Sharpie being the best point of reference uh, for all of my custom commissions that are larger. I use a Sharpie for the diameter of my jump rings. Well, I think that just about covers it for today. As always, if you have any questions at all, please feel free to leave a comment down below. And of course, if you have any video suggestions, you can feel free to leave those in the comments as well. If you liked this video and found it helpful, please leave a like and consider subscribing. And I also have my Patreon and PayPal down below if you'd like to help support me in that way. I hope all of your projects are going well and I will see you all in the next video. Bye.